What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're gonna go over how to import your videos and pictures into DaVinci Resolve 17. <laughs> I get all the time is simply how do I import my files into Resolve? Now, some people are asking, hey, what are the different ways I can import files? And others are asking, I don't seem to be able to access my video files or picture files from Resolve. What's up with that? And we'll be going over all that in this video. And real fast, if you guys wanna support the channel, just go down and give this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get this started. So I've got a new project open in DaVinci Resolve 17 and I'm currently in the Media tab. And if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, uh, the Media tab is made just to manage media. It can't edit, it can't color, it can't export. All it can do is import and manage media. Uh, it's a pretty useful tab though because over to the top left, you can see that my file system and hard drives are over here. This is the only tab within DaVinci Resolve where you can access your uh, file system within the program. Now you can go up to File and Import import media from any tab within DaVinci Resolve. You can go up to file and import and import media and it'll import into your media pool, uh, which is this section down here, uh, which you can also access from any tab within DaVinci Resolve, um, except for Deliver. I don't think you can access it from Deliver. No, you can't. Um, you can only access it from uh, Fairlight up here in the media pool. Uh, you can access it from Color, uh, media pool, uh, Fusion, media pool, um, Edit, media pool and cut also as the media pool. So once you get files into DaVinci Resolve, you can access them from that media pool uh, section of any tab. Now within the media tab of DaVinci Resolve, if I go to my file system and let's just say I start searching through some files here. So if I click on this file and then have my metadata uh, tab open, I can actually see that this is an MP4, uh, it's 48 seconds long, it's 2398 uh, frames a second, and UHD 4K. And all I have to do is drag this into my media pool. And now I have this under each tab where I showed you before where the media pool is. I can go to the media pool and access uh, that one file. Now to bring that clip into a timeline, I'd have to go to either the cut or the edit tab and bring this in to a timeline. Or I could also, from the Media tab, right-click on this clip and go up to Create New Timeline using Selected Clips. So you could do this with one clip or several clips. Now, uh, earlier I showed that if you come to File, you can go to Import, and you can import bin or media or media from XMLs, um, which is really convenient. Uh, you can import a timeline, um, which would give you the option to import an XML uh, a timeline from an XML. So if, if you're working with people that are working in Final Cut or Premiere, you can have them send you an edit in uh, XML file. And if you have all the media, then you can import a timeline uh, through that XML right here, which is really cool. So if I just want to import some pictures or video files, let me just go here and click on this Western Express file where I have some pictures. Um, I can come here and grab, let's say I grab this, hold control and grab a few more. I grab all these and hit open. Now I have gathered those pictures into my media pool. Again, I can access this from any tab uh, within DaVinci Resolve. Another thing I like to do is import bins. So let's say I went back to these pictures and I wanted to import them in their own folder. Um, there's something I could do here. If I went to my desktop, let me get there real fast. So I'm back in that Western Express folder that I was just in that's on my desktop. Now I can right click on this inspo folder where I had all those pictures. I can right click on that folder and say add folder and subfolders into media pool, create bins, which if I click that, boom. Now under master over here in kind of our folder section in the media pool, uh, I have this new folder called inspo where I can go through and kind of organize all of these pictures here. And from there, I can drag these into my timeline and keep on moving. Just a really nice way to stay organized while you're importing. Um, it's super important to stay organized, uh, especially when you're working on a big project or building something out. Uh, if you stay organized in the beginning, then you just have less headache in the long run. Um, so that's something I use constantly, uh, that bins feature uh, to kind of make new bins. Now I can come over here and Western Express, inspiration. Now I can label that. Now I know that these are the inspiration for the edit I want to make. Um, these aren't pictures I'm going to use. They're just pictures to gather inspiration from uh, and then move on from there. And also you can right click in the media pool from any tab to import footage as well. So from the edit tab, I can right click import media 
um, go to one of these videos here, boom, this one, and now I've got that image right there in the media pool. You can't do the create bins thing, which is such a powerful reason I use the media tab is because it gives you more import options. I can go through each file and right click and I can add the folder plus its subfolders or I can just add the files or I can add this folder plus a subfolder and put them all in their own bins, which is really convenient because if you already have a file system laid out, let's say you have the main file system and then you have B-roll from that day and you have camera A shots, camera B shots, camera C shots. That's a great way to just come in here over the overarching folder and add that folder and subfolders into their own bins, creating you know, organized file system within DaVinci Resolve. That way, inside the program, you're organized with your file system. And it just makes things a lot easier. Something I love about it. So if for some reason you're not able to access your picture or video files from the media pool, or they're not showing up when you go to try to import them, and for some reason it's just like Resolve does not want to even see the files that you want to use in Resolve. Um, well, that is because Resolve, unfortunately, does not support every single kind of media file out there. I've actually found a list of supported video files and codecs from Blackmagic Design. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, and you can check that out and kind of go over this wide variety of uh, featured media formats and codecs. Um, but I have noticed that there are several kind of common formats that are not on here, like MKV. Um, that's been a very popular uh, video format in the last several years. And that doesn't seem to be on here. And I'm sure there's plenty other um, not only videos, but picture formats that may not be included, uh, like especially raw picture formats. Like I know it supports TIFF, uh, .tiff uh, picture formats, but I'm not sure if it supports every kind of picture raw, uh, for instance. Like that may be something that you have to bring into Lightroom or Photoshop, uh, convert to a different kind of file before you can bring it into Resolve and take it from there. Um, so check this list. And if your video or picture file is not on this list, like I said, you can use um, Lightroom or Photoshop or GIMP, uh, a free video or a free picture editing app, GIMP, uh, that's pretty popular to convert your picture files to a supported file that's on this list. Um, but what about video files? Well, personally, um, there are two things that I've done. Uh, one is Adobe Media Encoder. Now, do you wanna have to pay for Adobe Media Encoder every single month just to be able to convert some videos? I don't know, but if I were on a Mac, that's the only way that I would know how to on a Mac. There may be a free um, solution out there. If there is a free solution to convert video files, I would leave that in the description below, please. Uh, and I will pin that to the top so any Mac users know um, what is a free solution they can use to convert their videos to something that is supported by Resolve. Now, from Windows, what I use is a, a program called Handbrake that is free for Windows users, um, and uh, they keep it updated. It's got a lot of support, uh, open source, really awesome. I've been using it for years, and it supports all kinds of very popular codecs um, like MKV and M4A, MP4, MP5, all kinds of different files. Um, and it could even be smart to convert your MP5s or MP4s into something else, like a QuickTime, uh, less compressed format, like I mentioned in uh, how to get better playback in DaVinci Resolve. A lot of it is the video files you're using. Um, so Handbrake can be a great tool um, when trying to use this kind of thing. Now, let me pull up Handbrake real fast, just for those of you that are, are maybe curious on how Handbrake works. When it opens, it's gonna ask you for a file location. So if I just go in here and let's say I just click on this file I've got on my desktop for you to explore. Um, I can click on this. It'll kind of scan the file, open it here, and it'll show me some preview images of the video. We can't play the video back, uh, but we can kind of get some previews here, which is really cool. And then from here, um, we can choose the format in summary of what we want it to be. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to choose MP4. There's not a lot of options within uh, a handbrake, but it, it's great if you have a really random file that you just need to get to a more ubiquitous file type like MP4 or MKV or WebM. So if I go there, uh, they have preset options, but for now, I'm just going to kind of go through just what I do. Uh, so I'll come over here to dimensions, and if I want it to be 1080, I'll leave it 1080. If not, I'll bump it up to, you know, the 3840 by 2160, which would be 4K. And again, they have 4K options uh, in here for web, device, um, production. Uh, but I'm going to keep moving forward because I don't have a lot of 4K options, to be honest. Like if I go to production, there's production max, standard, and there's 1080 and 540. So uh, don't love that. 
Um, but if I come over to video, then I can choose which kind of MP4 codec it uses, which can be really useful, um, especially if you want to go to H.265 instead of H.264 for some reason, 10-bit, 12-bit, um, NVIDIA. Now, me, I'm using a RTX Titan, and the fastest way for this to encode and the most secure way is if I use my NVIDIA. So um, if you don't have an NVIDIA card, you can simply just go to this first option, or you can go to the 10-bit option, whatever option you need. But if you're using an NVIDIA card like I am, I'm going to choose the NVIDIA option, then the frame rate that I want to uh, this to play back at, which is 24 frames a second. And quality, uh, consistent quality, I'm going to leave this at about 22. Uh, sometimes I'll go up to 20, um, but usually I don't go much further than that with this. I, if I were to, you know, if I need like production quality, if I'm, if I'm taking 400 megabit MP4s from my GH5 and I want to convert that to, you know, something as high quality as possible, then I might kick this all the way down to like 10. But, you know, I don't know if you're really going to see that much of a difference. You'll have to run your own test on that. Uh, but from there, encoder preset, I'm going to go to slow um, because the slower, the better. And in code profile, I'm going to go to high. And then from there, audio settings are pretty much exactly where I want them. You can switch this though to a higher audio quality like 256 or 320, um, which would be more like studio quality. Uh, 256 and 320 are studio quality. So um, if you're coming from a studio audio, then you may want to kick that up to that just to keep it on that same par. You have subtitle options and then chapter options, which we don't even need. And then from there, I can click browse where it says save as at the bottom and I'll go to videos. That's fine. And start encoding. From there, it'll encode this file, kick it out where I told it to kick it out. And from there, I can import it right into DaVinci Resolve using the methods I showed earlier. Boom. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about this whole process, just leave them in the comment section down below. I try to reply to everyone. Um, and it's tough sometimes, but I really try my best. But if you guys like this video, definitely make sure to click that like button. It really shows a lot of support to the channel. It helps YouTube show that this video is helpful for others. And if you guys didn't like the video, maybe click the like button anyway. Really help the channel out. <laughs> and as always, guys, feel free to subscribe. And I'm Marcel, and this has been Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>